<clears throat> Tonight we welcome all of you again to our fellowship around the word. We welcome those of, who are joining us in live stream also. We delight in your fellowship. Amen. Tonight we're going to be in the book of Philemon. This will be our ninth lesson. We'll be dealing with verses 14 through 16. Now it's necessary to say that spiritual life is absolutely unique. It stands separate and apart from all other kinds of life. Those who major <coughs> on making faith practical have failed to extend beyond the area of transgression. This is a, a particular mark of our times. People are very interested in making faith practical and telling people how to be practical. And if I may speak a bit uh, vulgarly here, that's a big waste of time. If people do not know how to apply their faith to life, you can't tell them. And if you could, we don't want them to learn that way, and neither does God. Because of the nature and content of Christian teaching in our day, there's a lot of confusion. Confusion among professing Christians about what's allowable and what's not. Mm -hmm. A tremendous amount of confusion here. And disagreement as well. Yeah. What's practical and what's impractical? Church members are generally very ignorant in this area. They really don't know how to think mm -hmm. in a godly manner. I'm not saying this to be critical. This is just this is just the way it is. This is the kind of situation. This is the product of the teaching and the various approaches and so forth that have been taken. This is this is the harvest of what's being done in Christian circles. This has led to at least two extremes. This indecision and lack of discernment and not knowing how to apply your faith and what to do and when to do it and how to do it. It's led to at least two extremes. One is being unnecessarily crude. People that don't know how to use faith tend to be crude. <laughs> Or, and generally, it's un, they're unwise. They say stupid things, and they just... What is that? That's the inability to apply the faith. It's like a, having a hammer and not know what to do with it. It's like giving a set of electric tools to one of our little children, and they wouldn't have the faintest idea what to do with them. They'd probably hurt themselves. That's what's being done in Christian circles. People are trying to use truth. They don't have any idea how to use it. Not at all. You think of the word Jesus said one time. He said, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Now, who but God could put those two things together? Mm, that's right. Don't, these aren't opposites. They go together. Mm -hmm. There are two traits you got to have at the same time. Yeah. Wise as serpents, mm -hmm. gentle as doves. Yeah. Right. Now, I say this because we're going to see some of this in this text that we have here tonight. The objective of every child of God is to be pure and tender and available and know to be taught how to act mm -hmm. by God, how to respond to various circumstances. Now here we have Paul responding to a circumstance. The circumstance is He's converted a runaway slave 
and he's going to send him home to a, bro, a master that's a fellow Christian. <coughs> Just how do you address a situation like this? See? So he's going to, he's, he's showing us how, he, how you do this. Uh, verses 14 through 16. <clears throat> He just finished telling him that he could have commanded him to do what he's going to say, but he chose not to do this. And he he could have kept Onesimus with him because Onesimus was actually helping Paul, ministering to him. He could have kept him there, but he's sending him back, and I tell him, telling him he's elaborating on why he's sending him back. But without thy mind would I do nothing, that thy benefit should not be, as it were, of necessity, but willingly. For perhaps he therefore departed for a season that thou shouldest receive him forever, not now as a servant, but above a servant, a brother, beloved, especially to me, but how much more unto thee, both in flesh, in the flesh, and in the Lord." That's a good uh, thread of reasoning. Without thy mind, some versions say without your consent. Another says without your approval or your counsel, or unless you agree, or without asking you first. I'm not doing this without asking you first, or I'm not doing this behind your back, or without first consulting you and getting your consent. Yeah, uh, this is an apostle saying this, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. who has received authority. Mm -hmm. But he's not going to proceed yes. without Philemon agreeing to it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yes. I like, I like the way it's stated here, without your mind. Mind, yeah. Well, the reason being... Like, God doesn't need our permission to do things, yeah. but he, he does draw us into the same That's mind right. with himself That's right. That's right. so we can receive the full benefit of it. Mm -hmm. That's and right. he's writing this, he's writing it for the benefit of Onesimus, but he's writing it for the benefit of Philemon That's also. Right. Amen. And for Philemon to be properly benefited or fully right. benefited. He has to. He has to be like-minded with this. Amen. He can't receive it otherwise. Yeah. He. I'm sure that Paul sensed that Philemon would be in agreement with this, but this he didn't assume this. He's going to state this, as Sister June has said, to draw Philemon into this so the three of them are of one accord. There's a threefold cord going to be a result here. Paul, Onesimus, and Philemon. They're going to be a threefold cord. They're all going to look at this thing the same way, even though they are all three in completely different positions. See, this is what God's doing to us in salvation. That's right. Amen. He's given us the mind of Christ. That's right. It's not enough just to be uh, separated from sin and made where you can't do something. You've got to be like-minded. Like-minded. Right? Amen. Now, here we have... Uh, a good example, a classic example, I call it, of not having dominion over someone else's faith. Uh -huh, yeah. here, here, now here, this is, this is lived out. Paul said to the Corinthians, to whom he had a, well, a lot to say, corrective and some pretty hard things. He said, not for that we have dominion uh -huh. over your faith, but are helpers of your joy, for by faith... You stand. Now, something that is by the means by which a something is the means by which a person stands or remains firm, whatever that is that makes a person that way, can't be controlled or managed by someone else. Now, this is important. This is very vital to know. This is. This destroys a significant percentage of Christ Christian activity. Amen. You'd be surprised how many people are trying to control Christians and manage Christians. Their whole ministries that this is what they do. This is the totality of what they do. Telling people what to do. 
No person who's in Christ, their activities cannot be controlled or managed by someone else, whether personally or through some plan someone else concocted. This cannot be used to manage a person's life. That's having dominion over faith. See, that's, that's what that is. Paul just called it what it really is, having dominion over faith. The reason for this is apparent. Now, it ought to be apparent. Only God can actually make a person stand or be stable or be consistent or... Only God can do that. And he only does it through someone's faith, yes, amen. which comes by hearing, yes. not by managing. Uh -huh. And hearing th the gospel is the vehicle through which hearing and faith come. In our day, men have formalized having dominion over people's faith. They formalized it. They do it through their plans and their regimens. The secret to standing, therefore, becomes their concocted means. And they as much as tell you this. This will help you to be stable. This will help you to resist. This, will, this is the means. These are all lies. These are deceptions from the wicked one. This is not true. This is not true. Yeah. Nobody can tell you how to live for Christ. Amen. Good. Amen. We know it's not true. We've seen people over and over again go through this and then they fall and then they fall. Right. And there's no stability apart from Christ. Mm -hmm. See, what happens is these plans... They cut God out of the picture. They say they're based on Scripture. Well, boy, hear me out here. Something that's created by men cannot be based on Scripture. You can't take a human concept and found it on Scripture. It's impossible. I mean, a valid concept and founded on Scripture. Why? Why not? Because there's an intent for Scripture. It's stated that the Word of God is, is profitable and it's for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, not for plans and procedures. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works or every good works. So in other words, the scripture itself is the source, Amen. Amen. not the building blocks for some other source. Why is it so important to know? Amen. Go ahead. And you said a valid concept. Well, an idea, a noble goal, in other words. In other words, an earthly, an earthly. Objective. It was conducted by earth, but it's, it sounds like something should be done, like this will help you quit, do this. And, that's what I meant by it. It's something that needs to be done, mm -hmm. but men are telling you how to do it. They say it's founded on scripture, and yet they give you very little scripture. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just like, well, you know, we know that God wants it, wants all of us to love one another. So, and then they build some structure, yeah. Yeah. but they don't really take you to Christ. Yeah. See, the scripture, the effectiveness of the scripture is owing to the Holy Spirit yes. who works for God and Jesus. Amen. That's right. So you can't use scripture mm -hmm. to develop some kind of a plan that makes life more meaningful and effective. You, right. you can't do that. Yes. But it's being done all the time. Yes. The bookstores are filled yes. yeah. with material that does this. Paul doesn't do this. Mm -hmm. He's not going to tell Philemon how to do this. Mm -hmm. <coughs> He's just going to tell him what needs to be done. He's relying that mm -hmm. Philemon's heart will be healed. His mind will be in sync. If you can ever, if you can ever 
get people to the point where they want to do God's will, they'll start doing it. Why? Because God immediately is brought into the picture. If any man, this is John 7, 17, if any man wills to do his will, he shall know of the doctrine. Yes. This is, why, this is why God is not working in the modern church. That's right. Because right. they've raised up, they have, they've lifted up these plans and these philosophies and things, and they've, they've t it's taken a place, it's taken a place of God, exactly right. the authority, and now they want to bring God in. Yeah. Underneath this, mm -hmm. and preach Jesus and all this, mm -hmm. and, and God ain't gonna have that. No, it's yeah. not. People are wasting their time. Absolutely wasting their time if they think they're gonna work in this uh -huh. and bring about change. It's For not. God, it's I not love. possible that God yeah. could bless this. That's right. Because it obviates Him and circumvents yeah. what He's doing. So it would not be wise to. Why? Why I say this is. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So if his thinking is guided by men, he's a servant of men, it doesn't make any difference what he says or what he claims. If his life for Christ is guided by what men have said, he is a servant of men, not of God. Amen. Yes? If there was a, a sudden revival of believing that in that you are complete in Christ oh. and, and all of these uh, attempts or all of the the uh, programs would become mm -hmm. defunct nobody would buy them that's right because all of them are constructed on a basic premise that the gospel needs some sort mm -hmm. of yeah. of supplement yeah. that's so right that the, that the that's word right. of god is not that it's lacking something and here's mm -hmm. what you need Mm -hmm. See, the people, the people who teach this, regardless of their claims now, are attempting to have dominion over people's faith. Right. Yeah. And it's, I hate to say this, but it does kind of most of the time narrow down to financial gain. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing how consistent this is. These people all sell their product. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh -huh. Can I get it? Yes. Um, scripture it always leads up to Christ. No matter what scripture it is, it always somehow leads to Christ. That's so, right. When these concepts that men have come up with, if they don't lead to Christ, then they can't even possibly be found in, on the scripture. Amen. That's right. Yeah. Now, see if the time of this text here, if it was proper to do this, then Paul would have done it. In this case here, this would have been an excellent, ex excellent example of someone that needed to be told how to do it, because it was such an unusual kind of a circumstance. But see, he, he stands back from this. He does not have dominion over his faith. I want you to see this. Yes. There's a difference in having dominion over faith. That I want you to see this. Right. I want your mind to join in with what's happening here. Yes of the new covenant was that they were all taught of God. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Yes. So I'm appealing to uh, Philemon's mind. Paul knows, of course, as a, man, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. He knows this, since he's going to give opportunity for, Philemon's, for Philemon to verify. Mm -hmm. he's, he sees what Paul's saying, thinking right along with him. I said, I would without your mind I would do nothing. I won't proceed any further till you're part till you're part of this. Till you can see, till you can see what I'm talking about. I'm not gonna proceed any further with because this would be damaging for Paul to pursue with sending Philemon back, or sending Onesimus back and Philemon's not in agreement with the whole thing. See, this this would be damaging. That thy benefit that thy benefit should not be as it were of necessity. Thy benefit. Your mother version say your good deed or your goodness. It's not the benefit that's coming to Philemon. It's the benefit that's coming from Philemon to Paul. The thing he wants him to do is receive Onesimus like you would receive me. That that's 
So that's the benefit that would come to Paul if Philemon did this. So that's that thy benefit you receive on Estimus just like he received me, then I know you've got what I'm saying. Amen. Then I know you see it the right way. But I don't want you to do this, Philemon, out of necessity or compulsion or obligation or out of force. Do I have to do it? See, when a person says, do I have to do it? Is this really something that has to be done? They're off on the wrong foot already. They're already thinking incorrectly. The question is to be, is this what God wants me to do? Then I will do it. Is this something that's right? Then I will do it. See, that's my mind. That's the benefit. And that benefits the person who's communicating this. It comes back one accord. We're one accord on this. And that's a benefit. He's going to do. He's going to do what Paul said, without being forced. Even though Paul already told him, I could command it. I could command this. But that's not how I'm. I'm not going to choose that route because that would have to be having dominion over your faith. You should. There are things you should do. That is. That is true. It's not that it's wrong to do things because you should do them. But there's a better and a more excellent way. Yes, and it's do them because you want to do them, because you see the benefit of them. That's the best. Amen. That's what Paul was saying to the Corinthians when he, told, he was telling them about their disorder and speaking in tongues and all this. He said a, a more excellent way. Seek the best gifts. Seek the best gifts. He said, but I want to show you a more excellent way even than that. Yes? feels as if they're forced to do something cannot adequately fulfill the demand. No. Mm -hmm. Only the one who is of the same mind can can effectually fulfill what is expected because Amen. they see the whole picture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Maybe a, yes, Judah, go ahead. There's so many <clears throat> quote unquote secrets to living a godly life today that it makes you wonder if there's more than one accord in the professed church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The body is all like-minded when we are baptized into Christ. Then we get his mind, and we all think alike, and we're all working toward one common goal. Yeah. There's only one. There's not more than one, and we're all moving in that direction. Yeah. Amen. Uh, the, the exceptions to this would be if you're dealing with children or immature people. Yeah. Now, that, that's a little different. When Paul wrote to Corinth about the fornicator, he didn't say, "Now we got we're not going to proceed any further until we're all in agreement on this." He, he, that was that kind of that kind of thing. You, it was, couldn't be done that way. So you then, but then you're dealing with people who themselves are very immature. So a person's got to be able to discern this. That there's times when a person's grown up into Christ, you appeal to their heart and to their mind, not to their obligation. Mr. Barb used the, the term forced. If you're forced, now there's a difference between being led oh, amen. and being forced. Amen. I mean, when it, there are times whenever uh, someone uh, who God has placed uh, in the midst of brethren for their, for their good and for their protection, there may be times when they have to say, now this is what we're doing. Mm-hmm. That's but right. that doesn't imply necessarily that the people who do it mm -hmm. are being forced. That's right. Mm -hmm. It's just they didn't see what to do. They needed somebody yeah. to say what it was. Mm -hmm. But they, they're they being led e even under that in that mm -hmm. circumstance. Mm -hmm. But if, if the occasion is that you're forced, see, that shows that you're at enmity. That's it. The truth Amen. There. And that you're being compelled to do something you do not see, you do not want to do, you do not agree with. Mm -hmm. That it's it's ex completely external to you Amen. as far as you entering into it. So there's no benefit. <coughs> now, 
The other thing is, see how the, that God is being glorified in this. Wisdom is justified of her children. children. That's right. Now you have the wisdom of God operating in Paul, and then you're going to see the wisdom of God operating in Philemon. Amen. So that God is going to be seen in a more unified way here as brother works with brother works with brother. Amen. So to speak. It, it, it really enlarges mm -hmm. as you back up and, and see it from a wider view. Now, thinking of force or obligation, this is old covenant. Yeah. Right. This is how the old covenant operated. Do this or die. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That, that was Because the people didn't agree. They were not of one accord with God. So that's the, the soul that sinned and it shall die. They did to stone them. That was the law. This is how the law operated. Forced because... Because the people were contrary to God. Philemon's not contrary to God. He's in Christ. Now the approach is completely different. But what if you what if a preacher preaches to believers as though they were rebellious? You know how we all are. God says do it and we just don't want to do it. See what they've inflicted damage. Unless the people are strong, they'll say, Well, maybe I don't. It'll introduce doubt mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. To, to young people in Christ. Uh -huh. So yes, the law, the law is for the lawless uh -huh. yeah. and for the disobedient and for the gainsayers. That's who it's for. Yes. That's right. You find it, but grace mortifies it. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And you can't mortify someone else's flesh. And that's, that's why right. you talk about the, the yes. Lord yeah. is calling us into the Amen. 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 So, not of necessity. Yes. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not talking to you as though you're against this, mm -hmm. saying this has got to be done whether you see it or not, but willingly. Something's done willingly is done voluntarily. It's something that's driven by insight. Person sees it, does it. See, that's obedience. You see it. Here's water. Here's water. One hinders me to be baptized. That's willingly, see. Can you see a right exercise here also of the things that, that God is... I mean, it... It was Philemon's bailiwick, what he would do with his slave. Mm -hmm. Paul said that he had a right. He, I mean, he had a claim on Philemon. That's right. That, that he could have said, this, you ought to do this, and you do it because I said. Mm -hmm. he, he could have said that. <clears throat> but you have a right exercise of the stewardships where Paul didn't step out of bound, bounds and in what he could have done, and and you extend it, use it to its its furthest extent, in a way that would not be beneficial to his brother, because he had a he had a responsibility Godward to do what was profitable for the brethren. Amen. And so he was calling upon Philemon to use the right exercise of his authority Amen. after a godly manner. Amen. Mm -hmm. Good, Paul's creating a context now whereby the Spirit can tell him this is what, what to do. That's right. Do this. Amen. But it wasn't going to be Paul you ruling out the work of the Spirit in this matter mm -hmm. by enforcing something on him. And he's also radiating Onesimus' return. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. if, if Onesimus returns and Philemon reasons, well, I'll take you back because I should. Or Philemon's anxious to take. It's all the difference in the world. And in yeah. Philemon as well as in Onesimus as well as Philemon and as well as Paul. So Paul, by following this, Paul is justified in his wisdom mm -hmm. and edified. Philemon is enlarged. Right. And he, it awakens mercy and love and right. grace and things like this. And Onesimus is anxious to get back. 
Oh, the Lord, give us uh, wisdom to Amen. respond so those yeah. things those things happen. You need to remember that in these circumstances, Onesimus is sent 1,500 miles <laughs> right. across the Roman Empire. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A man who is, who is literally in danger of being put to death That's when he right. arrives in Colossae. That's right. There, there will be some who know the situation, who would say he should be put to death That's to right. teach the rest of these men. That's lessons. right, amen. Things like, and yet he goes. Mm -hmm. He goes. So this is, the, 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 the truth that we're talking about here is already at work in Onesimus. Yeah, back on this was bringing this letter back. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. would, I wouldn't doubt that he read it a few times on the way back. Think yeah. what it must have done. If he did, think what it would have done for him. Yeah. Then he continues. He's, this is godly reasoning now. Uh, for perhaps he therefore departed for a season that he, thou shouldest receive him forever. Perhaps. Isn't that an interesting word? Mm -hmm. Perhaps. Some other versions say it's just possible, or maybe, or it may be, or I suppose, or it seems. The word translated perhaps means peradventure. Uh -huh. The word is only used one other time in Scripture, Romans 15, 7, where it's translated peradventure. Possibly, in English it means possibly, but not certainly, maybe. But as used here, it doesn't speak of a carnal wish. Mm -hmm. Oh, you got to see this. It's not speaking of a carnal wish. Paul knows how God works. Mm -hmm. He knows he can't dictate how God's going to work in this case here. But he knows how God works like this. It may be... Maybe he'll work here like this. Yeah. That's how he's reasoning, see. Yeah. He's familiar with God, familiar with how God arranges things. It just may be that this whole thing's been orchestrated by God from, it, from the beginning to the end. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So it turned out in a way that advantage Philemon and Onesimus and Paul and all those people who read about it centuries later. You can't say perhaps unless you have some understanding about how God, how God works. Based, so it's based on an understanding of God, how he works, and what's actually possible within the framework of his will. See, So when, you, when you're thinking to yourself what might be, don't think like in your own imagination, maybe this will happen, maybe that will happen, maybe, maybe I'll win the lottery, maybe... Think in terms of what you know God is noted for doing. Yeah. Maybe my hair will grow again. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Like Samson. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. All I got is this little, maybe this is like a jawbone. Yeah, that's right. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, once you know, and the only way you know is, is, is revealed in Scripture. Once you know how God works, this changes the way you think about mm -hmm. situations. Maybe he'll raise up someone like a, a grippa that want to let me go. Maybe he'll have the law protect me. Like like Felix did and Agrippa did too. <laughs> so anyway, it's a great uh, great area to think about. This is a very real way in which the Lord could work. So in thinking about possibilities, it's essential that we not be driven by self desires or imagining certain scenarios. Perhaps he departed for a season. Now the different versions present different views of this. Departed for a while, or parted from you for a while, or was separated. Yeah, that's a little bit different now. From you for a little while. Has been separated. See, that, that's someone else did it. Was gone for a while. Maybe you've been deprived of Onesimus. Maybe he was like taken for waiver. See, a little bit different. Some verse that he did depart or he ran away. So it's, I like the view that 
maybe this thing's been set up by God. I like I like that view best. Rather than maybe Ordesmus ran away so he could have a chance to come back. I I don't like that. Paul suggested this entire matter was orchestrated by God. That God had in mind comforting Paul by letting him convert on Onesimus while he's in prison. Yeah. Uh -huh. Amen. And then having Onesimus have first-hand tutoring yeah. <laughs> by Paul, so he gets a good grasp of things So when he goes back to yeah. Yeah. Philemon. So Onesimus will be grounded enough he can make this 1,500-mile trip without wandering off and backsliding. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so that Philemon can have a better grasp of the nature of spiritual life, maybe... Maybe God's teaching all of us here. Yeah, yeah. Don't you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Onesimus may have been able to minister when he got back. Oh, I don't doubt he probably it. probably gained uh -huh. some things they haven't, hadn't heard yet. Mm -hmm. Now, all of this doesn't mean anything to an immature believer. It's just, it doesn't mean anything to them. So you try to explain this to someone who's immature to say nothing of an unbeliever, and they just... <laughs> They'll say, you're not saying, they won't understand what you're saying. But to someone acquainted with the ways of God, this opens all kind of avenues of thought. There's no doubt that this, of course, would be a strong incentive for Philemon to honor God by the way he received Phonesimus back. I see that that's another point of wisdom that Paul is using and not commanding these things, but allowing the Lord to work yeah. in Philemon's heart, because who knows if the Lord could enlarge what work would be done if left in the heart of Philemon, to be able to take these things himself yes, by the Lord, right. larger than what Paul could have commanded in yeah. the first place. Amen, yes. that's good. You that know, you're kind of instructed by, by observing this, that whenever things happen to us, to, to stop and that think good. about good. what what you know to, to think on the Lord mm -hmm. and and at least like turn our eyes in the direction of what could God be doing here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most I have to admit that particularly my younger life, looking back, I got the lesson looking back. So this is why. I had some of these bitter experiences in Christian education. Uh, I didn't see it at the time, uh -huh. but I, now I see it. Now God was cutting that, cutting me off. Yeah. Yeah. No, what I want to give you, son, I can't give you while you're there. Yeah, uh -huh. hmm? you know, this is very instructive. You might receive him forever. Some verses they have him back. I, I don't like that back. I, I'll explain why. Have him forever might let him, might get him back permanently. The word receive, it's interesting what that word actually means, mm -hmm. is to have holy or in full. Mm, yeah. In other words, when Philemon, when Onesimus comes back, mm. you're going to be getting more of Onesimus yeah. than you had before. Yeah, that's right. yeah. <laughs> So some of you, your children, have just uh, been baptized into Christ. Mm -hmm. And when they came home, you had more of them yes, okay. than you had before. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. <laughs> oh, that's a blessing to think about. Amen. See, to say received him back, that would be like you receive him back in that same capacity yeah. he was in before. Well, he probably wasn't going to be a servant when he came back like he was before. But it was a different kind of, that's right. different kind of servant under different conditions entirely. Onesimus was to, uh, Philemon was to receive Onesimus in a sense he'd never realized before. Mm -hmm. yes. This was not the same Onesimus Amen. that departed. Everything had become new. Old things were passed away. Now Onesimus, along with Philemon, had been joined together with the General Assembly and Church of the Firstborn, innumerable company of angels, General Assembly and Church of the Firstborn, which are written in heaven, God the Judge of all, Spirit is just made perfect, Jesus, I mean, all those are e eternal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Those are eternal relationships. And when you're coming to Christ, you're in an eternal relationship. So someone says, does that mean you never be lost? That You missed the whole point. Yeah, that's right. Because you come into this by faith. So your, your connection with this society is only as sure as your faith is. If you Amen. lose faith, you lost the connection. Right. It's just like a, we got plugs. Mm -hmm. You can plug into power here. Mm -hmm. But if you're not plugged in, you don't get the power. Right. <laughs> you, can't, you can't talk the power out of the plug. you got to yeah. faith plugs you in. So this is how we are to receive one another. We're with one another for eternity. Mm -hmm. yes. So we just will start building, you know, Amen. productive uh, associations with one another. The only thing that can interrupt this fellowship mm -hmm. is for a person willingly to make the world his primary residence. Mm -hmm. And that interrupts this yeah. This fellowship. So receive him back forever. Maybe that's maybe that's why he left. So you could receive him back forever. And I can tell you that he would have enjoyed the service of Onesimus a lot more now than before. He receive him, but he says, uh, "Not now as a servant." Does that mean he wasn't going to be resume being a servant? No, it doesn't mean that. It means Philemon was not going to receive him as a servant. Technically speaking, he probably would still be Philemon's servant. Then fulfilling the word that Paul has said about servants, what they would do, he'd be fulfilling it. But this emphasizes this line of demarcation we've talked about, the spiritual line of demarcation that separates the past from the present. This is how Onesimus was, this is how he is. This is how he served you. This is how he's going to serve you now. Different. Completely different. This line separates what we were from what we are. Separates where we've been from where we're going. Separates the reconciled from the condemned, the justified from enemies. Reconciled from those who are joint heirs with Christ. This is not a theoretical line between hypothetical states. Mm -hmm. This is a very real line. Yeah, that's right. Onesimus is not the same. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. Good. Yeah, the law kind of foreshadowed this. <laughs> Remember, there, were, there was a different standard between a Gentile yeah, bond servant and one that was one of the, the brethren, Amen. The, the Hebrews, that... Uh, they were. They had a greater obligation to their Hebrew servants than mm -hmm. than to the Gentiles. Like you could own a Gentile forever, but you there there came a time when the brother had to be set free. That's right. They were just you know there was and and not just not just turned out. Mm -hmm. You, you had to, male or female, you had to give them yeah. as a, of your cattle and of your goods and stuff to, so that they had something whenever they left your, Amen. your service. Yeah. So Especially. Whenever he, see, I'm, I'm sure that, that this is at least somewhere in the thought processes of Paul. Amen. Because God didn't erase the law. He amplified it, and he showed the sense of what the law was was trying to mm -hmm. to uh, teach, yeah. teach us here, and that is when Philemon, whenever Onesimus comes back now, it's not like he's coming back like a Gentile. He's mm -hmm. coming back like like a brother. Amen. And, and so, yeah, he's still coming back. Yeah, he's still a slave or a bond servant, whatever he was, but. He's a brother bond servant, Amen. not a, a heathen bond servant. Amen. <laughs> yeah, there is neither bond nor free. That's right, in Christ. Christ. Now, he, did, he doesn't say he's not a servant. He says he's above a servant. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> More than a slave. Better than a slave. Much better than a slave. He's a, he's a, this is a superior category of people. What he is in Christ is over and above what he is in the, 
in the world or in the flesh. Primary identity. Now let's, let's just reason on this for a little bit. If husbands have a justified wife, she's more than a wife. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and if a saved husband is above, if a saved husband is, if a husband's born again, then he's a much more and above a, a, a husband. Born again children are above and more Amen. than children. Yeah. Offspring that are in Christ are above and more than brothers and sisters mm -hmm. in the flesh. Right. If you're an employer and your employee is a believer, your employee is more than an employee. Mm -hmm. And for the employee, your employer is more than an employer. <laughs> <laughs> above, he's above, an employer. Justified men sh should view justified women as above women. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh -huh. yeah. Right? <laughs> Amen. And believing women should be re view believing men as above and more than men. Mm -hmm. See, we must think of one another in a proper manner. That's right. Yes, Sister Jude is my wife. But she's above a wife. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See that what you are in Christ trumps. Amen. It doesn't eliminate, uh -huh. it trumps. Amen. That's right. And he's a brother beloved especially to me. Yeah, and I'm an apostle. I'm the only apostle the Gentiles got. I'm the only apostle that God explained his mystery to. Yeah, that's right. That's what kind of apostle I am. And Onesimus is especially, mm -hmm. oh, especially a brother beloved to me. Yeah. The church to the church of our day, it's a major step forward if someone admits you're a Christian. Who we got someone over here? Brother Just there, brother. Aaron. What the carnal relationships that you mentioned, natural relationships, maybe I should say, of, of family, Paul could have said a lot more of, about that because there's a lot of liability there. Mm -hmm. And we we have that in, in our assembly. There's a, a lot of us are related naturally. Mm -hmm. And but that that doesn't that yeah. doesn't See, that has to be handled by faith. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. I can't I can't yes. just be I got a lot of family sitting in this room, but it's a it's a handicap for me to view them just as family. That's yes. right. If I view them in Christ, then then it, it, it not only advantages me and them, it advantages everyone else. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Right. Yes. Brother David, also in that, um, those those kinds of um, relations will come to an end at some point. Mm -hmm. But this higher view, yeah, it will not. It yeah. will continue. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. Mm -hmm. As I was saying, in the Christian world in which we live, if some people come to the point where they admit the other person is a Christian, that is like a major step forward. To admit they're like brethren. This is a major. But here's what Paul said, beloved brother. Oh, that's a, that's a step higher. Ah, that's a step higher. It's one thing to say, oh, I'm right. I'm willing to admit you're saved. I'm... It's one thing to say that. It's another thing to say, oh, I love you, brother. Onesimus was a beloved. Brother beloved. There's a marvelous bonding that takes place when you come into Christ. And the bond of perfectness is Charity. Scriptures say Colossians three fourteen. That's the that's a cement yes, amen. that puts us together as charity. Obedience doesn't weld us together. As necessary as obedience is, obedience doesn't weld us together. It's love that welds us. Amen. Welds us together. Jesus said there was a 
there was a clear indication to, by which his disciples could be recognized. He doesn't say they've all been baptized. I'm sorry, it's not what he said. He said, by this shall all men know you're my disciples, that ye have love one for another. Yes, amen. One to another. Yeah. I think it's one to another. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, we have love one to another. I like that rather, for one another. Mm -hmm. For one to another, like it extends. Yes, right. mm -hmm. My love extends. Mm -hmm. Which means there's, there's visible means of detecting this. Yeah. That's how people know we're bonded. I'm bonded with Onesimus. I'm sending him back there, but it is a sense in which he's still here. Yeah. Amen. In my heart. So you receive him, you're receiving me. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now we got this. And you, I already know, Philemon, what you think about me. And now you, I've told you what I think about you. And I'm, I'm telling you how we both think about Onesimus now. Amen. That he's in Christ. <clears throat> much more, much more now. He's, he's the beloved brother to me, but... Much more to you, because in this case he'll be a better servant, mm -hmm. plus an excellent brother. So you've got like a twofold. Mm -hmm. He's going to be a really good employee, yes. and you'll really be glad he's there. Mm -hmm. You'll be attracted to him. This is our aim, you know, if you are in the work world. You want to be an advantage to your employer. That's right. Even if they're an unbeliever, you want to get an advantage. Mm -hmm. So the business does better because you're there. Yes. And then if he's a believer, then he'll have the, the extra of being able to fellowship with you on the break time. Mm -hmm. yeah, Maybe yeah. come to your assembly even <laughs> much more, much more. Mm -hmm. Oh, Philemon, I've, I've had some rich fellowship with Onesimus here. He's a beloved brother. He's been ministering to me, but oh, when I think like he'd be working for you every day. Yeah. Every day he'll be working for you. Yeah. Every day you'll have access to him. Every day you'll profit from him. Every day you'll have fellowship with him. See, much more. Yeah. In the flesh and in the spirit. See what it is if you got a good wife, good husband, good children, you got this much more. Mm -hmm. Amen. See, some people don't have either one. They, they don't have, their mate isn't good either way you look at it. They, they got a raw deal, so to speak. But if your your wife is a good wife, your husband's a good husband, you've got a two-fold benefit. That's right. Yeah. Amen. And you thank God for it. Amen. Because just as surely as God orchestrated this, mm -hmm. God orchestrated that. Amen. That's right. He directed you into this mm -hmm. profitable relationship. And sometimes... You're married after a while, you say, well, we're really well suited for each other. You know? <laughs> Brother Jean's mentioned this. So, uh -huh. Well, we couldn't fit us better. We couldn't find two fit together any better than yeah, we do. Yeah. Well, how'd that happen? Uh -huh. Perhaps. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> That's one of those perhaps. Mm -hmm. The Lord orchestrated the thing. Uh -huh. Amen. Yeah, Sister June and I, we got married. We got acquainted on our honeymoon. We didn't know each other. Mm -hmm. Just our names, that's about it. We were astounded how much alike we were. Perhaps, <laughs> huh? You can see you work you work out you work out your own situation, and you'll find it be quite edifying that God's been more involved with you than you may think. Amen. Well, this the soundness of Paul's reasoning. I was much blessed by it. It's, just, it's refreshing mm -hmm. to see how sound and solid mm -hmm. his reasoning was. That if you could just see what he's saying, boy, you have seen a lot. Amen. And that was in this kind of relationship. He was just as detailed mm -hmm. in his exposition of the gospel. He, yeah. So if you can see what he's saying, then you'll get the benefit mm -hmm. that comes along with it. All right, any of you have something you'd like to add? Yes, Sister June. I glory in the liberty that this gives us to put <laughs> God preeminently in, in all of our thoughts as we, as we uh, observe and, and we, we move through these occasions yeah. of our existence here. But 
just to be able to to think on God and have Him at the very source of all of our other reasoning, yeah, amen. and to pull in what we know that He's revealed in the Scriptures, in trying to if we if we have to to make decisions or we have to figure things out instead of just trying to figure it out on the level of of our earthly understanding, mm -hmm. rather to put God in that scenario. Mm -hmm. So that we're we're alert to the things that he's already written to us about. For an example, like what he said, how to how to treat brethren and, and how to treat your mm -hmm. your your uh, slaves and bond servants and stuff. See, he wrote things, but this puts you on the alert mm -hmm. to pay attention mm -hmm. to what has already been revealed. Amen. And then to, to look for God in it. Amen. And to also be alert. To the leading of the Spirit in this, mm -hmm. so that we're consistent in yeah. in our responses and mm -hmm. in our initiatives or whatever, so that we are representing God correctly because mm -hmm. we're we're behaving ourselves mm -hmm. in Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. So it's it, it just this is not to say we're this is not sloppiness. Mm -hmm. This is being spiritually minded. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not being loose. It's being at liberty. Amen. Mm -hmm. I see, once you've assessed your life and you've seen some of these divine workings, it makes you anticipate yes, amen. what's coming next. Mm -hmm. you're, you're actually more alert. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you will see the Lord moving this way. Moving. Yeah. Yeah. You can actually perceive it happening yeah. because you have grasped this, yeah. this truth. Amen. Yes, Brother Jason. This world is it's a cold, lonely place. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's pe people, worldly people talk about love and everything, but in reality, there's a lot of lonely, loveless yeah, people right. mm -hmm. fighting, with e fighting with each other, mm -hmm. hurting each other. This, this is the way the world is. Yeah. Yes. If you're out in the world at any length of time, you, you see this, see people hurt each other terribly, even family members like hurt each other terribly. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we and we got something here in the gospel, see, that re like revolutionizes <laughs> human relationships. Amen. Yeah. It's one of the it's one of the benefits of being in Christ is you you get His people too. On the yeah. other hand, if you reject Christ, mm. see, you yeah. reject all the benefits, yes. mm. all right. these benefits. So people people that refuse the gospel or people who like leave the church, leave the fellowship, see. Mm. They're, 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 they're losing all of this, all of these benefits that Christ brings, which includes like His people and the fellowship and all those, all those mm -hmm. benefits come. Mm -hmm. to, re, to, re, to reject Christ and leave that is a, is a terrible, terrible thing. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sarah, you want to say something? Um, what he said was, um, a man does not know how to think or act like a Christian. Um, I thought that because they don't uh, want to know the Word of God and they don't um, want to be a Christian. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. And um, also um, on here it says both in the flesh and in the world because if we're in, um, if we're here then um, we talk about God and know God, but when we're out in the world, like jobs and or somewhere, then there's a bunch of flesh around us. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. right. You're right, Sister yeah. Sarah. Uh -huh. You're absolutely Amen. right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, Sister Deb. As an example of what Brother Jason was talking about, I mean, a couple of years ago when I was cleaning house for different ones, and this family I did some cooking for, and so they had a death in the family. So grandfather passed away and they had a, a dinner there and they just wanted me to come over and help serve it you know and I did some of the food and it was just it's like I, I was caught off guard I wasn't expecting it and it was just so many little things that I picked up on that was so amazing they had family that got there that started eating before the rest of the family got there there was no prayer before I mean this was not a Christian family so it was just like such a stark contrast in yeah. my mind mm -hmm. yeah. that I was, like, I was so used to being 
in such a different environment yes. that it was it was just a shock mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then there was bickering over who was going to get what flowers, and it was just oh no, I could go. Just yes, simple I understand. Things, and it was just mm -hmm. you know empty and void of any yeah. consciousness of God. And like I say, it was mm. just such a uh, sharp contrast that I could see. I was just yeah. so affected well, by it. It was just we got the fruits of unrighteousness. Yes. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, the while you were speaking about Paul's tenderness there at the beginning and his, and his willingness to, to reason about these things with Philemon and Onesimus' willingness and mm -hmm. all of this. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I was recalling the uh, all the circumstances there in Acts 16, 17, and 18 <laughs> where Paul was chased from one city to yeah. another. Mm -hmm. Timothy and Silas were there with him yeah. and they would stay and then he would send word back and direct them what to do. Yeah. And then he would send Timothy back to Thessalonica with a letter. And then they, he'd go on to Athens with instructions for Timothy and Silas to come. And then they went down to Corinth and Timothy and Silas <laughs> showed up there later. And, and he would direct, he, he could direct people. Oh, yeah. He certainly could. And they, would, and they cooperated with him. They followed yes. his leadership and so forth and so forth. But it, it's, it's staggering when you think about the case of this slave. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> this slave and, and traveling that distance and, and, yeah. and this tenderness. And, and Paul had never been to Colossae. He probably right. met Philemon in, in Ephesus during that yeah. two-year period. That's probably when he got to know him was there. Yeah. And yet he would send him there and all of these things should work like this. And uh, it's, it's an amazing thing. Amen. God Amen. was in it. God was in it. it. Amen. Amen. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy yes. power. Yes, well, I was thinking of that text as well. Mm -hmm. I was thinking that what Brother Jason said, that it's dark and cold out there, that you wouldn't be out there because it's filled with sin. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. That's right. It's good thinking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what did she say? Say it louder so they hear it coming. It's cold out there, you wouldn't want to be out there. Yeah. In the world. <laughs> yes, Brother Ricky. Uh, marvelous light that shines forth when you look into God and His testimonies in Scripture that helps direct you in life. That's that mm -hmm. perhaps you were talking about. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I found that God will orchestrate you to think in terms of things He's done in the past that will be best suited for that's right. how He's directing you in the yeah, That's right. Amen. And, uh, you know, that's something I found great delight in. You know, I don't. I don't seek God just so that He'll give me direction. I, I seek the Lord for the Lord Himself. Yes. Yes. And uh, in the midst of that, He provides that kind of direction. Yes. And uh, I'm thankful for the light. Amen. Amen. Just a Maddie? Because I, I had never actually made the connection before that Onesimus was the one carrying this letter. Yeah. That Philemon had not seen it prior to Onesimus' right. arrival. And so this journey was an exercise in faith for, Amen. for Onesimus. Uh -huh. Amen. He didn't have a, a previous uh, understanding with Philemon that he was going to be received That's right. in, this kind, in a kind way. Yeah. And so he, the whole time he's traveling he's, he's believing that God is going to work all this out for his good. Yeah. And that he's going to go before him and prepare Philemon to receive him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and that it is true that there are circumstances that the Lord has us to pass through where we don't have everything uh, set out before us. You know, we, we have to take each step at a time and trust that the Lord's going to bring us to the conclusion. And there are, this is a very good example of <coughs> working your, uh, exercising your faith. Mm -hmm. uh, one step at a time. Amen. Amen. Perhaps mm -hmm. some people won't appreciate the fine food they're served at home until they have to eat with pigs. <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> All right, we'll have a word of prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we're grateful for texts like this. 
and the tenderness and sensitivity that they reveal. We thank you for what sensitivity you've given to us. We ask that it would increase, that we would be quick to perceive and quick to learn and quick to move an instant in our response. We commit ourselves to you in expectation in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.